A few weeks back, I decided to make this illuminated arrow sign. Can't quite remember why anymore, but it turned out to be quite an interesting project, but more from the construction method standpoint. The back of the sign was made from a piece of scrap wood, spray painted blue. Onto that, I attached kind of LED strips which had been cut down to size. These were arranged in eight 90 degree segments to form the arrow shape. The panel was wired up from the back. I drilled a series of holes at the end of each of the LED strips and fed wires directly through from the rear. These wires were then soldered in place to the light and were daisy chained along the back. The positive wires in each were all kind of connected to a common run and the negative terminals were left floating ready to connect to the controller. For me, the frame was the interesting part because this is something I hadn't, or I used a method which I haven't used before. So I obtained some kind of 90 degree kind of white um, plastic kind of edging, the type of stuff you might use in a bathroom or a kitchen just to finish off some counters. This I then spray painted blue, the same colour as the backing, and I then proceeded to kind of cut uh, four pieces out with 90 degree corners. And then to join it together, I used super glue. I wasn't quite sure if this was going to hold, but it did a reasonable job considering the very tiny surface area that was being bonded. Each of the LED strips is connected to like a mini FET board from SparkFun. This is a small little companion board for the Arduino Pro Mini. It's designed to kind of run or control eight FETs for eight outputs such as this. The final wiring is incredibly simple. It's got the FET board, the Arduino Pro Mini, and the power for both of those comes from this uh, barrel jack just glued in on the side. To finish this thing off I had a sheet of blue acrylic the same size as the wooden backing and that then sandwiched in between the edge of the frame here and the wooden back. All of that was then siliconed in place to perform form a kind of a solid kind of enclosure. When the frame was constructed the edges weren't particularly good there were some gaps so to finish it off I used some kind of model making filler. This did a, a really good job of sealing it up. It's still not perfect, but uh, it's a lot better than it was, and it's certainly good enough. That was then sanded down and sprayed. It took a few goes to kind of get it to that point, but I think it's uh, more than adequate. This was meant to be a one or two day project, but like a lot of things I undertake, it did take a bit longer. But I did learn a few interesting things along the way for the construction of the frame, and a few things I want to try differently next time something like this comes up. The end result is a lot better than I was expecting. It looks, it looks really quite good up close, um, so it's definitely something that's going to hang on the wall in the workshop.